Hi, my name is Mike and I am one of the in-house education consultants here at The Profs. I specifically, um, subject-wise, come from a background of doing mathematics and physics related degrees. In fact, I've got four of them under my belt, which means that I have a, quite a lot of experience personally um, in terms of knowing sort of structurally how universities sort of operate when it comes to giving a physics degree, um, but then also having worked as an education consultant, not just here at the Profs, but also, um, you know, for nearly a decade before joining, I have a very good understanding. I also know from experience, what are the more difficult universities to apply for? What are the easier ones to apply for? When is it better to go for whatever university? I mean, there are very, very difficult questions uh, to answer there, but hopefully we're going to address some of them today. It's really important to note here. None of the universities that I'm going to be talking about today are terrible universities. It just ends up being that physics is one of the most competitive um, subjects that you can apply for going to university and perhaps the most popular. So I am going to be a little bit harsh. There may be some things you agree with. There may be some things you disagree with. We'd love to hear about uh, your thoughts in the comment section. For those perhaps that are more experienced, maybe they can give some insider information um, beyond this video as to what a real selling point of their university is. Um, but without further ado, let's get on to ranking some universities. As you can see here, we've got our select list of uh, universities that we are considering for physics degrees, and we have our ranking system. So like with the maths video, if you haven't seen that, um, make sure that you watch that following the link on screen right here, or you can find it in, in the description below. So starting with the S tier, um, we have to put Oxford and Cambridge in there. And once again, we like maybe with some of the other videos that we have on our channel, you might see me add maybe one or two extra universities to our S tier. So I'm going to add my S tier universities on now, and then I'm going to explain my thoughts on them in just a few seconds. Okay. I'm being honest. Obviously I'm being very, very strict with my thoughts on this. Um, but the three universities that I put um, being S tier have got something in common. They all require um, a very, very heavy sort of academic procedure. They all require very high grade requirements. Two of them require admissions tests. You've got um, Oxford, for instance, uh, with the, the physics aptitude test. And you've got uh, Cambridge with uh, the NSAA or the natural sciences admissions test. They don't have exclusively a physics degree they have a national sciences uh, degree and then you have to choose physics within that imperial don't have an admissions test funny enough but they can interview some of the applicants um especially if you are um, an aspiring international student just to check whether you are on par with the status of the degree um but you want to be aiming for top grades at least an a star and two a's possibly even higher than that just because these are very well sort of the places to study the subject. Let's move on to our A's then. Okay, so I know that it took a little bit of time just to get all of those universities onto that too, but I think this is a very, very good list. As I said, uh, physics is an incredibly competitive subject. It is kind of reflected by the fact I had a hard time uh, choosing universities to go down to B tier, but the A tier universities I have, they are competitive Russell Group universities or top universities that are consistently strong um, with NSS um, in terms of their scores and employability. Um, and their offers typically range between like an A star and two A's to AAA. Now, as, as a little bit of a disclaimer, as I'm giving these offers, they can vary on the student, and that is gonna be every time I give an offer, so bear that in mind. Um, but big thing with this one, um, these are universities that actually see value in you taking the admissions test, but they're not compulsory. Uh, they're not compulsory to take, per se. Um, they only really benefit your application overall. So um, you can definitely, you could take admissions tests quite a few times, for instance, you could maybe take an admissions test in October. Let's say you don't do too well. You might be able to retake it in January, uh, for instance. So there is a bit more flexibility there. They don't often come with um, necessarily interviews at all. Um, and they're still very, very good for employability and general student satisfaction. 
overall. Um, I'm also very, very biased of uh, the University of Warwick, of course, um, because of the fact that I got to study a few electives when I was there, I remember, um, doing a module on the standard model. And I have to say, the standard of teaching of physics there was incredibly high, particularly good for um, experimental opportunities. Manchester is another university that is really, really good. It builds off... Um, And you'll find that actually with a lot of these top universities, um, it's very interesting to find out what famous uh, physicists, physicists, there we go, or famous scientists have attended these universities and have made a name for it. Um, so you'll find actually the experimental um, phys physics opportunities at these places are incredibly huge. Manchester is a particular one of note. I'll let you research that on your own to see why. <laughs> um, but let's go to tier B. see what I'm going to be putting down there. Okay, so those are my B tier universities. And you notice that there's a little tiny difference uh, in the A tiers. I also forgot to put the University of Edinburgh um, actually up on tier A, which I thought needed to happen because of the The research prospects are huge for the University of Edinburgh, and as an undergraduate student, um, you'll be able to do some very exciting things in your third and fourth year, especially uh, if you want to go down, say, like um, a crossover with physics and mathematical biology. Um, it's, um, yeah, really, really important to be able to put down there, especially being one of the best universities in Scotland. Um, but B-tier universities, how do they differ? Well, uh, again, The grade boundaries are getting a little bit lower now. So it's hard to introduce universities that uh, in the majority of cases could be happy with a, a B, but then there are some universities that are still going to typically ask for all A's. Um, but so, and also, once again, we're starting to get to the position where admissions tests is not even really, um, it's not compulsory, is not really going to be typical. as part of uh, an admissions to these universities either. So for instance, UCL, we have a look at that one, one of our London ones, doesn't require a standardized test, but expects high performance in mathematics, further mathematics and physics, whether you're doing A-levels or IB, and they will give you an individual sort of score to be able to reach based on what other qualifications you're doing and how many and in what capacity. So it's very much with these universities um, at this level, Um, sort of standardized to the individual candidate. Um, some of the prestigious ones that um, on the higher tiers, that isn't so much the case. I've also put kings on here um, just because um, there is often this question of in terms of like Imperial, UCL and kings, which university should you go to for physics? And generally, um, the consensus, although it can vary, the consensus is that we would go Imperial, UCL and then kings. Um, in terms of like the prominence of the physics department. Um, but I'd still say King's is, is still a very nice university to go to. It's just a little bit smaller and a bit more intimate than the other universities, which might be better if you want a higher student to staff ratio, um, which means that actually you get an opportunity to be able to learn more possibly uh, information a bit more intimately than at other universities, which might sort of be better for your learning style, uh, depending on who you are. Um, let's go to the C tier, C tier next. And again, just to emphasize, these are not bad universities at all. And this is also, you know, a subjective opinion um, across all of this in terms of what I think. Um, but let me just put my choices down for this tier. Okay, so we now have our C tier um, or C tier universities. Um, universities, this Um, sort of at this level, again, requiring um, sort of less rigorous grade requirements. Um, it typically ends up being now that for physics applications, even though they're still asking for maths and physics to have been studied, they might go more of a UCAS point system instead. So rather than having so many A-levels, you may have some universities that are going to be like, we need so many UCAS points. Um, which is awarded differently depending on whether you're doing an A-level, um, you know, the IB, 
or whether you're doing like an extended project, um, for instance, it's important to sort of double check online how much each thing is worth uh, in this regard. Um, but I would say these choice of universities are um, a little bit less rigorous to be able to get onto, but still offer some really, really strong uh, sort of applications, particularly when it comes to the crossover with physics and engineering. You might go more for a C or D tier university, perhaps if you know you just want to go into industry rather than continuing on to, uh, on to sort of education as a career uh, or professional research. Not to say you can't do that, the route is just a little bit more difficult than if you were to perhaps go to a, a top tier university um, and then sort of transition from there. Um, that only leaves, unfortunately, two universities on D tier. And this isn't me saying I don't like Royal Holloway or I don't like Strathclyde, but I'd say, personally speaking, uh, these are, are fairly low down just because... I would say uh, they're having to distinguish between Swansea University uh, and uh, the University of Straff um, Strathclyde, which I think is um, really, really similar, to be honest. I feel like I needed to sort of pick between those two and make a decision. And unfortunately, that um, ended up going down. And um, with Royal Holloway, um, I mean, it still has some very strong areas. So it's really good with low temperature physics, but... Um, is a little bit niche. It's not typically a first choice for top physics applicants, just naturally. So that's why I would have it in the, uh, at least that one in the D tier. D -tier. Um, but is with some of the universities, C, C tier and D tier, they, they almost become a little bit difficult to choose between. Um, and also, generally speaking, every single year, you are going to get some changes or switchovers with um, sort of universities Um, and in terms of where you might place them, basically, in terms of rankings. A uni that isn't perhaps doing too well at the moment might be incredibly, you know, sort of respectful for um, studying physics in five years or 10 years time. You never know. So, <laughs> But saying that again, like all of these universities, I'd say, are good places to study physics. It's just if you're going with one of the lower tier ones, you might be more industry focused. If you're going for the top tier ones, you might be more education focused. Um, but generally speaking, if you're applying for um, university anyway, and you are actually filling out your UCAS application, you have a maximum of five you need to choose from. Don't be too greedy and choose, you know, too much in S tier. Knowing as well, you can't choose Oxford and Cambridge at the same time is going to help with that. Um, make sure that you choose one of the universities lower down uh, on this list to act as a backup so that you know you're going to be you know safe in studying physics at uni and of course the lower down um sort of the uni is the more likely they're going to be offering clearing options too if you don't quite get the grades that you need to be able to get into the course even advertised so um it's hopefully allows you to be able to sort of see visually like sort of the flexibility of the options that you have on offer if you're going that route So those are my rankings for um, sort of physics degrees. If your university isn't on there or I've um, put your university really, really low down, my apologies. Um, but I would love to hear sort of, you know, your experiences uh, at these universities if you're already studying there. Um, what do you think? Is, is it a fair comparison to make um, for those that are applying to university? Are there any universities that you are particularly drawn to? Um, which one takes your fancy um, other than Oxford and Cambridge? Um, are there any uh, A or B tiers that you would be comfortable in having as a backup that might not even be on this list? How would you rank your own universities? Um, it would be really, really interesting to hear in the comment section. So please engage. Um, we love to hear sort of the opinions on people that watch our stuff. Um, and we like to help in whatever way we can. Um, but if you want some more direct help, Um, you can find our details on screen right now or in the description below under this video. Um, and you can get in touch with one of our many, many tutors that have gone through the same process of applying for uni uh, for physics. I've already completed the degree at, um, or a physics degree at lots of prestigious universities um, and know what they're, they're doing and know what they, they're talking about when they say universities are looking for A, B and C. 
um, even if you're very, very confident with applying for university, your chances of getting the place that you want um, statistically are going to be very much maximized if you work with a tutor. So now is a really, really good time to sort of get involved in that just before the beginning of the next academic year. Um, so if you are interested in sort of, you know, having our help, even if it's to learn a little bit more about physics, then please don't hesitate to get in touch and we will help in whatever way we can. But until we hear from you, uh, I want to wish you best of luck in your application and we hope to hear from you soon. Take care.